Hello, everybody. I am delighted to be here. I'm greatly honored to be asked to speak um, about how we fund transportation in Missouri and how we could fund transportation in Missouri and how they do it in, in some other areas. So let's, uh, let's begin. We're going to talk about the practical, possible, and theoretical ways we, we do pay or we could pay for transportation in Missouri. I'm going to start off with the same question. Whenever, whenever I give these talks, I start, I start off with this question. And the number of people who know the answer is always directly proportional to how close we are to it. So here, we'll, most of you might know this. But what is, we have exactly one told transportation asset in the state of Missouri. Who, who here can tell me what that is? Community bridge, like the old Lake Ozark Community Bridge. All right, somebody else here loves Party Co. That's right. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too. Me too. So it's the only toll in the entire state, bridge or, or highway. Until there used to be a few other bridges in, in, the, in the state, but they've both gone towards, they've either closed or are now free bridges. But we've never had toll roads in the state. And I'm going to give you one, one tip. This will... If you, if you save a little money from this some point in your life, this will uh, pay for the cost of this lunch and probably a little bit more. And uh, the hint I'll give you is a very tax-specific question. So why should, why should you not buy cars in Missouri in December? Think of those sort of Lexus Christmas event sales with the big bow. Yeah. Right, per perfect. Property taxes on your car are, are based on what you own on January 1st of that year. So if you wait just a week after Christmas to January 2nd, you save an entire year's worth of, of property taxes. So, so that is, I did that this year. We bought a car on January 3rd. Right, exactly. <laughs> and Lexus knows this. Those Lexus ads in, sales in Missouri run till January 2nd. So, all right. MoDOT put together this chart. It's very informative, and they, they share it around a lot. And I want to share it too, but I do want to credit them. And as you can see, it, it talks about the, the miles in the state highway system, the gas tax in Missouri, and where Missouri ranks as to revenue per mile. And as you can, you can see, we rank 44th in the country in revenue per mile. We have, we have a lot of roads in our state highway system, which in other states would be probably handled at the county level. That's why we have so many more miles. But as you can see, the gas tax is, is lower than all of our surrounding states, except for Oklahoma. Um, the difference is our gas tax is more technically 17.3, which I'll get into in a second, where Oklahoma's is, is a flat 17. So they're a little lower. They make extensive use of tolling in Oklahoma as well. We don't have that here. So this, but this is a great, great map. And I'd be happy to forward this to anybody who might want it for other purposes. How do we pay for our roads in the state of Missouri? We pay, we pay a number of ways. Princ principally, we pay, we pay via gas taxes. And as I said, it's 17.3 cents per gallon in Missouri, seventh lowest rate in the country. And uh, that 17.3, it's 17% is a gas tax, and 0.3 cents of it are various transportation or, or other type of fees that get added on. The federal gas tax is 18.4 cents. And we have the same tax in Missouri for diesel and regular gas. The feds have a a uh, six cent higher diesel tax. But when you compare Missouri to other states, and, and w one of the things I'm talking about here, and I'll get into it in more detail later, is, is other ways to, to pay for it. Should the gas tax be higher? Is, is the gas tax properly counting for all the costs of driving? And one of the, one of the questions that comes in is that you read these studies, and we'll, we'll, we'll hit, hit on some a little bit later. Let's say the gas tax should be X amount, or or Y amount to, to deal with the cost of driving. And I think a lot of those studies fail to consider that in various states, they pay for transportation other ways. One of the ways we pay for transportation in Missouri is through real and property tax, real and personal property taxes. Every state, every county in Missouri, and every township in township counties has a road and bridge, uh, road and bridge fund. So every time you're paying for your taxes on your house or your car, you're, you're paying into that road and bridge fund. The 2008 Boone County rate 4.75 cents for $100 of assessed valuation. That is extremely low. I'm not sure if that's the lowest of every county in Missouri. It's certainly among the lowest. And that is, and there's a reason, there's one reason for it, which we'll get into at the next slide. But that is how you pay principally for your local roads here in, in Boone County. That and, uh, that and gas taxes, which, 
on the last slide, a portion of that state gas tax gets sent back to cities and counties for their own local roads. Kansas City has a very unique land tax for their roads. If you've been to Kansas City, they have these just beautiful parkways and boulevards that get you, get you through the city. And they have, a, they have a, a unique to Kansas City land tax. It's not based on the value of the, of the building or the improvement there. It's just a, a low rate on the land. And that's how they pay for a lot of their local parkways and local boulevards. They also have a frontage fee for property along some of those roads where you pay a, a set rate depending on how, how wide your property is along those roads. That's unique to the state. And one of the things I'm going to talk about today is the way different counties and different cities in the state pay for certain things. So, but the Kansas City one is, is very intriguing. We pay for, aside from, aside from property taxes, we pay for transportation every time we buy something in Missouri, in most of Missouri, that is, that is subject to, to, trans, to sales taxes. We pay many cities and counties in Missouri, 211 cities to be exact, have a transportation sales tax. Columbia has one, and we'll give you that detail in a moment tends to be the larger ones. About half of the, the cities in Missouri with more than 10,000 people have, a, have their individual transportation sales tax, excluding counties and cities in St. Louis County. Because in St. Louis County, they do sales tax collections different from the rest of the state. And that's a whole story all, all to itself. But, uh, so many cities and most of your larger counties also have a transportation sales tax. That's one of the reasons, and probably the principal reason, why your Boone County property tax is so low, because you're paying a Boone County sales tax as well. When you buy something in Columbia, you're paying a half cent or half of 1% to the Boone County Road Fund and a half of 1% to the Columbia Transportation Fund. These fund roads. A lot of these sales taxes around the state also fund transit. That's a, the principal way in which we fund buses and in, our, our, and in the St. Louis area, light rail through, through sales taxes. There are numerous other ways that we pay for transportation in the state of Missouri that, that all kind of get into the system and they're all, they're all sort of minor. Every time you get a driver's license, every, every time you're, you're renewing your plates, you're, you're paying a fee that goes, to, that goes to MoDOT generally. When developers build along major roads, oftentimes those developers have to pay a fee into that county or city road system for the ingress and egress rights. Transportation development districts, these next three are kind of all together, special road districts and transportation corporations. These are three ways for sort of quasi-governmental entities to, to fund and, and to develop roads or bridges in a certain areas. Transportation development districts are very common in urban areas. Special road districts are much more common in rural areas. For example, Boone County, I'm sorry, Columbia, has eight transportation development districts, and the stat I got that from was a few years old, so it could be higher at this point. How many are? 13. They're generally done in, in our cities along with uh, re retail redevelopments, and the, where the developers will form these transportation development districts. I think there's, they're a very good way to pay for local districts or local improvements. However, the, the state auditor has has identified some very <coughs> legitimate concerns with transparency, so people don't really know what they're paying for, and I think those concerns need to be, th those transparency laws need to be very strictly enforced. But with that, TDDs can be very successful. Special road districts, as I said, much more common in rural areas. Boone County has one, uh, the Centralia, Centralia Special Road District, which pays for roads in that area out of the county's funds. You can, you can do that several ways. You can level additional taxes in special road districts, or you can form them to just guarantee a portion of the county road fund within that area goes to that. I think that's how they do it in the Centralia Road District. I don't think it's uh, any additional taxes. Direct user fees. Um, the, well, for example, the toll in uh, over Lake Ozark Community Bridge, but also direct user fees could be a bus pass. Uh, it could be a municipally owned parking lot. When you pay to park there, that might go into your, your fund. So we, don't, we really don't have nearly as many of these direct user fees as they have in many other cities and states. 